Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Amaker. I'm the director of P-TECH Norwalk, and I am very grateful that you've taken time out of what I'm sure very busy, a very busy evening to join us for our uh, P-TECH town hall meeting. Um, we'll continue to allow people into our town hall meeting via Zoom. Um, I have a couple of my colleagues from our leadership team who will be assisting with the uh, chat, moderating the chat, as well as um, allowing people into our town hall from our waiting room. So to get started, um, we are going to talk a little bit about um, our reopening plan. Uh, we'll spend some time right now just talking about the purpose of our town hall meeting. And specifically, we're going to review the our school's reopening plan. Um, the goal of today, uh, or one of the many goals of today is to assist parents and families in better understanding how the school year will be different uh, than in the past. <clears throat> Obviously in a pre-COVID environment and now we're, we're in a different time. Uh, we're also going to highlight the practices and protocols that are put in place or have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of all of the members of our school community. Uh, we'll discuss the responsibilities of students and parents as well as uh, the responsibilities of the educators in our buildings. Um, and you'll have a chance to ask questions at the end of our uh, presentation. And that will be through the chat. And so if you have questions, please continue to have those questions entered into the chat. And we will be sure to answer your questions towards the end of the presentation. Um, if you have friends, colleagues who are not able to make it, uh, as I mentioned in my email, this is being recorded. Uh, this town hall meeting is being recorded and so they'll have an opportunity to view it uh, as early as tomorrow and there will be other opportunities for us to uh, engage in discussion and answer questions that you have because the information is ongoing and incoming at uh, different times as it becomes available so i think it's important for you to understand how this evolved um, we met as school leaders We've met with the district leadership who have been quite busy in, in making sure that we have everything in place to ensure a safe re-entry for all of our school community members. Uh, the PTEC plan specifically aligns with that of Norwalk Public Schools and prioritizing the health and well-being of students and staff, making sure that student learning and growth, uh, as well as their social and emotional needs, are at the front and forefront of everything that we do that we are employing a, an equity and access lens to all that we do as well, and that there are teacher and staff supports in place so that our teachers are well and can teach our students. Our number one priority, as you can imagine, is making sure that we have health and safety protocols uh, in place because we want students to feel comfortable coming into the building. We want them to be able to focus on learning. Uh, we want them to uh, be both well in terms of their uh, academic programs, as well as their co-curricular programs. And so to that end, we have created a 50% reduced density. And we're also making sure and taking uh, steps to make sure that, um, that there are no visitors in the building, that those who are within the community uh, remain in the building, and that all members of the community are kept safe. Uh, we're working with the transportation director to make sure that buses are running um, at less than full capacity we've talked about and have planned for loading changes to make sure that the way in which students enter uh, and exit the bus or get on the bus uh, are different than before so that there is less contact. Um, I'm sure you've heard in some of the other town hall meetings that you've been a part of that the daily health screenings is priority number one as well, that we want to make sure that parents and students are completing the screening prior to coming to campus that once at the school building, they will be required to wear their masks that completely cover the nose and mouth. And I think one of the things that we've uh, made sure of is to make sure that we're building in mask breaks that are both safe, but also necessary for students to feel more comfortable when they're in the building. The um, importance of physical and social distancing is also a priority for us, making sure that within the classroom, students are spread six feet apart that even in the halls, we're doing uh, work around making sure that if a student or students are outside of a classroom, that they are also distancing themselves and that we are making sure that there are uh, their signage as well as um, markations, demarcations for students to not be too close 
uh, to one another. In terms of controlling the flow of traffic throughout the building, we know that the high school building itself can hold up to 2,000 students, uh, if not more. And so, of course, making sure that we're at reduced density is important, but also making sure that we don't have large congregations of students in the halls when they're passing from uh, class to class or when they're going, uh, coming and going into the building um, and out of the building, as well as when they're going to the lunch, uh, to their lunch stations as well. Our schedule include, uh, includes increased passing time. So when we get to that, uh, looking at the schedule later in the presentation, you'll see that we've built in additional time to allow students to actually use the flow of traffic and directional arrows that will be throughout the school to maintain safe distancing. We are moving from most likely a bell system to an intercom announcement system so that we can safely move students from location to location. Uh, and that includes examples like moving from A house to E house and so on. We want to make sure that the students and teachers hear the announcements. So we make sure that our intercom systems are working and functioning appropriately uh, so that students can move safely throughout the building. We've worked with district leadership and Bill Hodell's team in facilities to make sure that there will be deep cleaning at all high touch point areas, as well as making sure that bathrooms are monitored and that they're cleaned twice daily. We want students to wash their hands before they come to school. There will be times uh, throughout the day for students to continue washing their hands frequently. And then obviously at the end of the day and before meals. We are not going to be using lockers to reduce the amount of time that students are in close proximity to one another, but also there will be no sharing of materials. We're working very closely with school leadership and district leadership to make sure that we can secure the necessary supplies and materials for all of our students who are in need. One of the big uh, items that we talked about today in one of our many meetings with district leadership is HEPA filters, uh, air filters that will be in every classroom. And so that is a commitment that the district has made to make sure that there is um, quality airflow in every classroom, in every building. And I'm sure that as parents, you wanna know what happens in the event that someone becomes ill during the school day. And so we are working together, uh, Mr. Roberts and I, to make sure that there is an isolation room, that we have protocols in place for contact tracing, and that we will be employing measures of quarantining if and when it becomes necessary. So about building arrival uh, and our entry and exit plan, our screening protocols, uh, we are working with the district again to make sure that we can secure an app that would uh, facilitate ease of use in terms of screening. Um, every student and uh, adult will be required to screen before coming to school. Once at school, students will arrive to uh, their entry point and there will be an arrival team that will assist the student. Uh, if we are using the app and we're, we're looking uh, to do that, um, the, the app uh, will be used to assess whether or not the student has, um, has been cleared to enter the building. And if, in, if for any reason the, the app is not available or the student forgets or that someone comes late to school, we will use paper copy and the same screening protocols will be in place. Uh, Mr. Roberts and I are talking about specific entry points for PTEC students just to make sure that we are not overcrowding entryways. There will be multiple entrances uh, that will be staffed by adults as well as security officers. And we're also looking at, as I mentioned before, in terms of transportation, staggering entry and dismissal to make sure that students can flow in and out of the building in a safe way. Uh, you'll see here that the calendar states that the first day of school is September 1st. There has been no change to the start of the school year. Um, if that changes, obviously you would be contacted. In terms of PTEC's uh, reduced density model, as you know, we share a building. There are two high schools in this, on the same campus uh, with Norwalk High School. And so part of the work that we did in securing information from families is to make sure that we have uh, the appropriate ratios to uh, have a cohorting model that would allow for students to be safely in the building. And so based on the data that we received, we have 129 students who have decided, or families who have decided to go full remote um, so they will participate in their learning remotely. Um, we have 275 students or 68% of our population 
who have elected hybrid model. And so I'm gonna share with you in a few moments uh, the schedule so you get a better sense of what that looks like for your student if he or she is uh, attending school through the hybrid model. And we have grown uh, significantly with the support of uh, the district from a staff of about 20 to 30 now uh, at P-TECH. We will still be employing a, a rotating schedule, but what's different about this is that based on the cohorting models uh, or model, you'll have students who are in the building based on their cohort. When they're not in the building, they will spend the other days remote, but all students will participate uh, if they are remote, full remote or on the rotating hybrid calendar, they will be participating in synchronous learning. And that's a, a huge shift um, and a really important one so that we can maintain what we were able to do. And then of course, uh, over the, the, during our distance learning beginning in March, but really uh, getting better at it and making sure that all students have synchronous learning throughout their, uh, their schedule and throughout their day. So in this instance, you'll have, uh, for instance, group A will be in person on A days and B days, I'm sorry, and group B will be uh, remote, remoting in, um, but still participating synchronously. And then that changes for uh, the groups when it's on a B day. And so we're gonna spend some time in that first week of school talking with students, making sure they understand exactly what this means. We'll spend some more time and send out some communications once we have schedules finalized to make sure that parents understand exactly what that means. If that includes or it becomes necessary for us to color code, we'll do that. We will do whatever is necessary in terms of our communication to make sure that this is clear and understandable for students in the two uh, distinct cohorts. I also wanna point out that on uh, September 23rd, that Wednesday, we are offering the SAT, which was canceled. Um, this will be a day where grade 12 students will be in person in the building, uh, but all other grades, grades nine, 10 and 11 will be remote. And there will obviously be more information uh, once we begin uh, planning for SAT day. In terms of the daily schedule, we are looking at, as you know, uh, the Healthy Start Time was approved uh, last year, and so we are moving to that model. Classes will begin at 8.30, but again, because we are staggering entry to allow for reduced uh, density, um, we will begin uh, opening doors at 8.15 for student arrival. Students will still have the four periods per day on A and B days. Um, we have about, let's say, 78 minute periods, I believe it is. We're increasing the passing period, as I mentioned, to 10 minutes and we'll adjust if it becomes necessary to do so. Um, the lunch shifts are still 30 minutes with 10 minutes of passing time. And we will begin staggered entry, I'm sorry, staggered dismissal at 2.45 with the day ending at 3 p.m. This is a sample high school schedule, so you can actually see the day in the life of a P-TECH student. And so you have little Malik, grade nine, gen ed student. He's in the building, uh, he's on his hybrid schedule, and he takes the bus into school at point one. He arrives to school no later than 8.30. First period will begin at 8.30. Uh, he then has his periods uh, or blocks, periods one and two. There will be built-in mass breaks that we will uh, designate to make sure that students have about a minimum three mass breaks uh, throughout the day. So one in the morning, obviously during lunch, and then one in the afternoon as well. Um, we will have advisory. The district is committed to making sure that we meet not only the educational and academic needs of our students, but also the social emotional needs of our students. And so our advisory programs will take place once a week. Um, that'll look different in the first week of school, but weekly advisory meetings are still on our schedule, which is a great thing for our students and, and staff. Lunch uh, is by, um, will be offered in a number of different locations throughout the building and will be staffed as well, uh, making sure that there are no more than 25 students in any one location, if in fact the, that location can hold up to 25 students smaller uh, areas will be used if necessary. Uh, towards the end of the day and after lunch, periods three and four, when we will attend his classes, and then we will start the process of um, dismissal 
making sure that all students are boarded on bus on the bus by 3 p.m. And then if there are afternoon or uh, after school activities that the student will participate in, we will address those as well, making sure that there are adults who supervise all activities after school. Um, more information is coming out about the athletic programs, but we're waiting for district to get information from FCAC as well as um, other entities that will make decisions about uh, the athletic programs. In terms of distance learning, there's not much of a difference at all. We want parents and students to understand that uh, the distance learning program or the hybrid model is in place so that students can fully participate in their learning while they're at home. So the schedule is identical, um, obviously not eating at school, breakfast and lunch, but students will be, uh, should get a good night's rest. They should have their breakfast in the morning. They log in for an 8.30 start. And whenever their lunch break happens, they will just walk away from their computer, but leave it on because they will be coming back for periods three and four. We want all of our students, uh, whether or not they're in person or at home, um, to participate fully in the advisory program, which is of a benefit to students, obviously. And then the same thing with the end of the day and after school activities. Um, depending on what that looks like for students, we will have to talk about transportation. Um, and if a student needs additional supports after school and working with the teacher, we will set up some type of model so that students will have access to teachers um, for extra help. In terms of dining and food services, we wanna make sure again that we're maintaining health uh, and safety measures. Uh, we will have grab and go breakfast and lunch uh, in various about four locations throughout the school building. They'll be served in small, small cohorts, no more than 25 where allowed, um, smaller in certain other areas, making sure that we maintain distancing. There will be no cafeteria dining. As you know, the cafeteria is a very large space and can accommodate up to 400, 450 students. That is absolutely not going to happen. There will be no dining in the cafeteria. Um, we're making sure that we're working with food services to ensure that students have um, touchless access point when purchasing food. Uh, that will be using school bucks to add money onto the online accounts. And again, masks will be worn at all times uh, throughout the day, uh, obviously not when students are eating, but we'll make sure that there are provisions to make sure that students can eat and dine safely. There will be signage uh, and students will be uh, assigned certain locations uh, depending on where their course or class is uh, right before they go to lunch. And then as always, the meals will be labeled for allergens to make sure that we're keeping students safe at all times. We've decided uh, to put together or put in place a special schedule for the first week of school. Um, typically we have one or two days that has a spe special schedule. Students go to what uh, is typical, uh, typically the home room, they fill out some paperwork. We're not doing that this year. We're making sure that the entire first week of school is dedicated to helping students transition back to school. So lunch will be provided, breakfast and lunch will be provided. We're making sure that the special schedule supports the students transition back to school. We'll have an advisory period as well, about 50 minutes. Um, and we will take time throughout that entire week and throughout the school year, obviously, to review uh, the safety protocols, the procedures, making sure that students understand the necessity to follow the traffic patterns as well as the directional flow arrows that will be um, throughout the school on the floors, on lockers and such, so that they understand the, the flow of traffic and can adhere to those, those protocols. So as you know, P-TECH, the P-TECH model has three programmatic elements to it. The high school program um, is what I just reviewed with you, alternating instruction between in-person and remote learning that the schedules will be consistent for all students and the same for teachers. Uh, our students who are in Norwalk High School classes will have a schedule that denotes that as well. Um, and we will be taking that into consideration as we cohort students. Uh, sports, and arts, and activities uh, are available in person and for remote students. Uh, the degree to which students will be involved or will plan uh, or participate will depend on what the, the policies and protocols are that come down from the state as well as from the district and the health department. Um, we've made sure that in terms of equity and access that our students um, with uh, disabilities as well as our English language learners uh, 
have the option to participate or have the option to participate in school full time. And so if they do that, we will make sure that those provisions are, are in place to support their learning and them being in the building full time. With regard to the college program, uh, Norwalk Community College program, uh, what we know so far is that distance learning is in place for the majority of college courses. Um, the transportation is still being worked out. And so we'll provide updates as that becomes available to you. But we are uh, happy to announce that we are teaching more college courses um, on our campus than ever before. And so that means that uh, the core courses are being offered um, at our school, still college credit, but through our faculty in English, history, computer science and technology, graphic arts, uh, the humanities, as well as math. Uh, in regards to the industry partnership, IBM has really stepped up to the plate. Um, they, although internships were canceled this past year for our juniors, they have committed to offering a thousand virtual internships to the entire network of PTEC schools. And so uh, Austin Hutchinson, who is our IBM liaison, will be sending out information uh, as soon as that becomes available, but that's typically later in the year. But I just wanted to put that on your radar as PTEC parents that uh, the virtual internships through IBM are still available. Uh, if you haven't heard about Open PTech, you'll get a lot more information about that uh, soon. Um, and that's an online platform where students can participate in all types of learning as well as badging. And so that's open to all of our students uh, throughout the PTech network of schools, the 200 schools. Uh, IBM has secured seats with Princeton Review for students to participate in SAT prep. And so we have 105, 105 seats available for our PTech students. Um, Hutch, as we call him, uh, will be working with um, Ms. Crawford, our curriculum and instruction site director, as well as Carol Wilshire Toth, our school, uh, school counselor lead, um, to make sure that the students who are both interested and would benefit from SAT prep will have it. And then every student has access to individual tutoring through tutor.com. And so those things are in place, more things to come, and we'll be communicating that to families. Uh, probably right after school begins. In terms of technology and laptop deployment, you should have received an email um, that states uh, that the, the days for the laptop program and, and exchange are August 18th, starting tomorrow through the 21st. Um, that information should be on our Facebook page as well. Uh, students are bringing back their Chrome uh, Chromebooks and getting a laptop um, with camera that will make it uh, much easier for them to participate in online learning. Um, there is the one-to-one -one program, so we're really excited about that. And this is a commitment on the part of the district to make sure that students have the technology to support their learning uh, while they're participating in remote learning. Um, the online support depot service for in-person tech support, as well as internet access, is being provided to all students and families, so you'll get a lot more information on that as well. So additional information, uh, the bus transportation and loading changes that will be communicated to you as soon as it becomes available. But please know that we are reducing the number of students on buses, increasing uh, the number of buses so that change can take place. Uh, one important piece that I think um, I, want, I wanted to make sure that I included was that we have been told that there are some students, PTEC students who have not uh, submitted their medical physical forms. Um, or have not had their physical. It's important for parents to know that students will not be allowed to participate in school, regardless of how they're participating, remote or hybrid, if the physical is not received uh, by the nurse's office. And so if you haven't had an opportunity to do that, please contact your uh, provider and make sure that your student has the physical completed and that the physical form is in school prior to September 1. In terms of who to contact for what, um, as we build out our school, making sure that you have access to all of the adults that you need access to, we're going to put together an org chart, but also contact information so that you can contact the school counselors, the social workers, special educators, teachers and administration, uh, as well as Ms. Donnelly, who is always at the forefront um, and making sure that parents have whatever supports they need so that will be communicated to you as well uh, via email. 
And we're inviting all of our ninth grade parents to participate in a parent orientation. So Ms. Wilshire Toth will send out dates for you um, so that you can get much more information that is specific to your student uh, as they transition into high school. Um, but at any time, please feel free to contact us. Uh, we wanna make sure that you feel supported um, in your student's return to school and that we can answer any question that you have. If we are not able to answer any questions or a question tonight, we will take that question back to district leadership and make sure that we are in communication with you. So at this time, I'm going to uh, have our moderators, Ms. Wilshire Toth, as well as Ms. Crawford, um, start to moderate the chat. And I will stop sharing my screen at this time. Thank you very much for your participation and uh, we'll get started. Thank you, Ms. Amaker, for that presentation. We will now uh, address some questions that were asked in the chat. Uh, the first one, I am planning on having my son tested before going back to campus. Is, is, this still, is this something that the student body and staff will also be doing? In other words, is COVID testing required before staff and students return to campus? Based on the conversation that I had with uh, Dr. Costanzo and Ms. Feoes, um, that is not something that we are mandating, but we are asking that families take necessary precautions, but also um, provide the screeners before they actually come to, to the campus. Um, so we thank the parents who are willing to do that, but that is not something that the district can legally mandate. Can you provide um, an example for the day in the life of a student that has elected vir the virtual option only? Sure, I think we, uh, we covered that in the slide presentation, but I'll try to go back to that so we can take a look at it. Um, I have to share my screen. Okay, so this example uh, shows exactly what's happening and it really isn't much of a difference at all in terms of the level of participation. The expectation is that students are logging into uh, their first period class, hopefully a few minutes before that time. Um, school begins at 8.30 for all students, regardless of whether or not they're uh, enrolled in the hybrid model or they're in full distance learning. And so whenever the student is at home, the student is expected to participate in all of their classes on their schedule. If there is a, um, a study hall, uh, for instance, the student obviously would have the period off, but we're, we're hoping that the student would engage in some type of academic planning and preparation, reading, independent reading, uh, similar to what they would do if they were in the building. There will be a lunch break on the schedule and that is when the student would not be enrolled in any classes. And so the student should utilize that time, um, however they see fit to get lunch, to re-energize, maybe move a little bit. Um, if it's a Wednesday, they'll participate in our advisory. Uh, so they'll have access to the advisory and that most likely will be, uh, everything will be on online. Um, and it depends on the teacher, what modality they will use in terms of, um, or online platform, be that Zoom or Teams or something else. But that information will be shared with the students. Uh, they also then will attend their period three and four classes um, with the tech break, making sure that students are able to get up and move about. Um, so those will be built into those uh, period three and four classes and we'll work with teachers to make sure that that happens. Um, there will also, uh, so at the end of the day, it will be three o'clock and the student would then log off, um, making sure that they carve out some time at the end of their day uh, or somewhere before the end of their day, um, between three and whatever time they go to bed to make sure that they're completing their homework. Um, there will be systems and protocols in place for students to uh, communicate with their teachers if they need extra help. Um, so those kinds of things and, and plans are ongoing. We met with the staff today um, during our first day of our P-TECH retreat 
and we had um, almost the entire staff there, all but one who is finishing up vacation, and they're already underway uh, making plans to provide for a safe return to school, but also making sure that the learning looks different um, so that students are uh, more engaged than ever before, given everything that they've been through, that we're being patient in our processes and our, um, our uh, pacing to make sure that students get the support that they need to be successful in class. Um, so that's ongoing and will be going uh, ongoing throughout the year, but also making sure that teachers, the adults participate in professional learning opportunities that will provide them the strategies necessary to be successful in, uh, in teaching their students. Thank you. The next question is, how is the physical distance and mask wearing being monitored? Um, students are required to wear their masks at all times. Uh, if a student uh, decides that he or she will not wear the mask, they are not allowed in school. Uh, the safety of every member of our community is, is of the utmost importance. And so we cannot have anyone who would jeopardize that. Um, so the students absolutely have to wear their masks. The mask breaks are going to be built into the school day, um, but students may not elect to take off their mask uh, whenever they choose. Thank you. The next question is a two-part question. Um, the first part says that checking the app at school entry is great, but how does it work for kids riding the bus? And the second part is, will the bus have a monitor to allow students into buses only if they've self-monitored through the app? Can you read the first part again? I'm sorry. Sure. Checking the app at school entry is great, but how does it work for kids riding the bus? Well, actually, the screener is supposed to take place prior to the student leaving for school. Uh, regardless of whether or not they're on the bus, they're driving themselves to school or a parent drop off. So, excuse me, we want to make sure that the screening is happening at home with the parent uh, in all ideal situations. Um, so the parent is uh, completing the screener with the student prior to leaving the home. Uh, so no one should be getting on the bus if they're ill or if they're not feeling well, um, because there is the option of participating online if that becomes, uh, if it becomes necessary to do so. So there, there are those two checkpoints. One is prior to leaving home and getting on the bus. The other one is when they arrive to school. So that's a member of the school community school staff will be able to look at the screener and make sure that the student is approved to come into the building. Second part of the question again. The second part is will um, the buses have a monitor? Um, let's see, will the bus have a monitor to allow students on the buses or only if they have self-monitored through the app? So I think I answered the piece about the, the app. Um, if I didn't, please feel free to uh, ask the question again. Um, in terms of monitors, bus monitors, the district is still looking into what is uh, possible and what is necessary. There have been conversations about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, making sure that there is an adult on the bus, but I don't know that to be um, finalized just yet. So feel free to reach back out. Um, I'll definitely ask the district about that to see where we are in that planning um, and in that process. But uh, it has been discussed. It is being, uh, it, is, uh, it has been taken under advisement um, and something that the district I think is, is hoping we can do. How will a student know if they're in cohort A or B? So how will they know if they're AA or BB day? So we are, uh, we are now in the process of having just identified who has decided what. There is a multi-layered uh, approach to um, cohorting students. And so we wanna look at all of the students who for whatever reason need to be in the building. Like I said, our special populations um, who may elect to be in the building full time. We will look at siblings. We'll look at um, preference uh, based on what students have said. And then we will begin the cohorting process. But that is a very involved process in the sense that we need to make sure that um, if a student is at uh, one, a sibling is at Norwalk High and one sibling at P-TECH, that we cohort appropriately so that we minimize uh, the stress and a whole a lot of other things on the family to ensure that students are in school on the same days. So we will be notifying students um, once we design that. Uh, and I'm working with the leadership team, Ms. Crawford, Ms. Wilshire-Toth, Ms. Donnelly, to ensure that we have our cohorts finalized, obviously, before the start of school. So we will be communicating 
uh, a lot more information next week um, to, to families and to students. Okay, the next question, and I think we had a few, so it might be best to address them all at one time with regard to uh, the courses being taken at NCC uh, with okay. scheduling. So specifically, uh, some parents would like to know if NCC's guidelines for returning um, will um, have been confirmed and how will this information be communicated to students and families? Uh, Mrs. Donnelly is on the call. She is our college program coordinator and I'm gonna ask her, uh, she's been in contact with Mr. Duffy, uh, who is the academic advisor for all of the PTEC students. And so I'm gonna ask her to chime in here, but I think we have to unmute her. Hold on one second. Hello, everybody. Um, so for NCC classes right now, um, the majority of them are set up in an LRON feature. Uh, so they're completely online, but there is a timed uh, session that they, uh, students will have to attend. Um, we are working to get the logistics down for registration and then I will communicate that to students and we will host an online registration day for students to register for their classes. NCC is working right now with the list that I've provided them to try to work out all of the um, back end issues that they, they've had uh, in the past so that uh, it should be a pretty seamless process when uh, we get ready for registration. Um, and another, I guess it's two part or two different parent questions. One is um, if a student's family has elected uh, remote learning, but the student is attending NCC, um, how will that work? And the second part of the question or another question is how will NCC students meet with school counselors on the PTEC campus? Is there a protocol in place to make sure those students are interacting with PTEC staff? Great questions. Um, Annie, you can also chime in here. Um, in terms of making sure that students have access to school counselors and support staff, our school social worker and any other supports that are necessary, we're going to make sure that that happens. If it needs to happen um, uh, via Zoom or an online meeting, we can make sure that that takes place. Uh, the counselors were absolutely phenomenal in creating opportunities. They even set up a Google Classroom during distance learning uh, beginning in March to make sure that students had access to them and the supports that were necessary. There are also um, supports at the college that we'll make sure that students have access to as well, but nothing should change other than the fact that we're in COVID situation, right? But all of the services that are available to students will still be available. It may look different, um, but our students will have access to their school counselors. NCC will also have their online tutoring available again once the semester starts. Um, in regards to the first question about the student uh, staying home for remote learning, that uh, all of the classes that we have that are being taught at NCC uh, are all online with the exception of the, uh, the, the meeting time that they have to be a part of, but it, but it is all online, so. The next question is, uh, do the kids have to register for the SAT ahead of time? So more specifically, I believe they're speaking about the 12th grade students for the SAT day on September 23rd. I don't believe so. I would have to review that again, but um, we'll be sending out information. My recollection is that the students will not have to register, um, but don't quote me on that. Uh, whatever it is, we will definitely facilitate the registration process. I believe, and Annie, you may know a little bit more, um, I believe that the school will take care of the registration process for students. Yes, I was on a call today with uh, College Board so that nobody will have to register. We'll take care of all of that for you. Great. The next question is that uh, their son is staying with remote learning. How will this work with, NC with classes at NCC? I think we just covered that. Yeah. So then I'm gonna head to the next one then. Um, how will the schedules work for PTEC students taking AP classes offered at NHS? I can um, speak to that if you wish. Yeah, please, yeah. Um, relative to the schedules, um, 
whether or not your student has selected the remote option of learning from home or will be hybrid and in the building with us, their schedules um, will be fixed and remain the same. So um, whatever your student's schedule will look like, including, for example, an AP class, whether at PTEC or NHS, um, that will be their schedule. So there'll be no differences there. Um, and so it'll be a, a seamless process relative to the schedules. The next question is, um, if the student is already scheduled to take the SAT, can they still take the one at the high school? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so the seniors should definitely reach out to Mrs. Costello, uh, the 11th and 12th grade school counselor. Um, we wanna make sure that, uh, that if they are going to take the SAT twice, that they discuss the dates that they're taking it. Um, and there's nothing that says that they can't take it twice. But um, if it's within a month of each other, just putting my school counselor hat on for a moment, um, that's just a lot of testing for any student. And considering that there are already uh, probably a tad bit stressed because it's senior year, um, just make sure that that student is talking with their counselor um, so that they're on the same page and she can be of support to the student. Can you confirm, are the IBM internships being offered to seniors who missed the opportunity? Uh, that was the uh, plan for pre-COVID, and so I can say with some certainty that that's the case. Um, I will confirm that with Hutch uh, and make sure that he sends out communications to all families. Thank you. Are the new laptops still Chromebooks? No, we're really excited about that. Um, the district has invested in real laptops. Uh, the Chromebooks definitely serve a purpose, and we are very, we're very excited that students uh, have the opportunity to participate in a one-to-one, -one, but these are actual laptops. Um, I believe they're HPs. They will have the cameras. We are making sure that students also have headsets so that they can participate fully in their education, but they are laptops, and the deployment, again, is, uh, begins tomorrow uh, and runs through Friday. Uh, I do want to say, I think the, there was a question uh, at another time uh, via email about the um, about the insurance and students having to return their their Chromebooks. If you've paid your insurance, then that Chromebook is yours. So there isn't a need for you to uh, swap that out. Um, but because we are going to repurpose the Chromebooks um, for other purposes, uh, if you will return it, you will get your your laptop. So every student is getting a laptop. Thank you. The next question is, do all students need a physical or only 10th grade students? Um, there was an email that was sent today that it was for 10th grade, but any incoming 9th graders are also required to have a health form sent to the nurse's office. Those can be emailed directly to the school nurse. Great. And so um, in my communication, I'll also include that. But as, as Annie said, there was something sent out. Um, but I want to make clear that students are not allowed to participate uh, in school, period, uh, hybrid or, um, or uh, hybrid or remote if they do not have their physical uh, completed and turned in. So please make sure that that's a priority. Thank you. The next question is about cleaning desks in between changing classes. Are students permitted to bring their own wipes to school to wipe the desks? That's a very good question. I do not have the answer for that. Um, and because of possible allergens uh, with other students uh, or staff, um, I need to get back to you on that. So if you can just record that question, I'll bring that to district leadership and facilities to make sure that we give you an answer to that question. Can medical forms be dropped off at the campus? I don't know the answer to that um, because we don't allow visitors into the school building. And so I'm not sure if that is in place now. So that is another one that I will ask district leadership um, the answer to and get back to you. I, I can say from speaking with the nurse, he would prefer that they are emailed um, and you can even snap a picture of it and send it uh, via email. It doesn't have to necessarily be scanned and emailed. You can take a picture. Thank you. Other parents, 
Yes, the parent has a question about instruction. How is the in-classroom interaction between teachers um, and being remote, like raising the hands, participating in class activities for virtual only students, um, how will that work? How will the personal relationship be fostered between the virtual students and the teacher? So, Renita, I'm actually going to let you take that as our curriculum and instruction site director. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. We are, yes, we had our retreat today, which was our, our first interaction with our staff collectively as we prepare for the, the upcoming school year. Um, and we did have some discussion about it today, more is to come, but we are advising our teachers to prepare for remote learning. Um, it's not that they will disregard the students in front of them, uh, but the idea is if they can prepare to engage uh, students in an area that's probably more difficult for them, um, that they would be able to acquiesce. It is a learning process for teachers um, as well. Um, we are providing additional resources and training for them um, to ensure that they are continuing to provide instruction um, that is not lecture style, but that truly is engaging um, and gives students an opportunity to really be active in their learning, um, specifically at PTEC. Our focus this year is on project-based learning. Um, so you should see your children engaging in task-based activities that require them to think critically, to be curious, um, to, and to create, uh, whether they are in the virtual model or in-person hybrid model. Thank you. The next question is, are we able to switch from hybrid to remote at any time? Uh, the short answer is yes. However, um, because there is this um, trickle-down effect of, of making that change, um, if for any reason a student and family decides that they want to go from one model to the other, we are asking families to do that at the end of the quarter. If that cannot be done, then we would ask that families uh, respect a two-week timeline to a window to allow us to put all of the necessary measures in place. Uh, for, for instance, if a student um, decides to uh, leave uh, full remote learning and come into the building, we need to make sure that our numbers support the uh, protocols that we have in place for reduced density. Uh, if that impacts that, then there may be a wait time, but um, yes, students and families can elect to do that, but um, there is a process that, that is uh, very much involved to make sure that everyone remains safe. Thank you. The next question is, what measures and protocols will be taken to distinguish between a common cold, seasonal allergies versus COVID? Good question. Um, we're going to first ask that parents assess that for their child, and that would uh, be in the form of the screener. Um, if for any reason a student is not feeling well enough to come to school and the parent just suspects that the student is uh, either contagious uh, because we know flu season is coming about, we know that students just they elect not to come to school when they're just not well enough to do so. And so the, the protocols that are in place, even pre-COVID, um, are still in place. Students and, and families should elect to have that student stay home uh, because of the overabundance of caution. Um, the student can still, depending on how well they feel, they can still participate in remote learning. So it's very possible that the student will not miss any instructional time if they decide to stay home. So I would say that students should err on the, the family should err on the side of caution and make sure the student stays home. If the family elects to get the student tested or to see their physician, that is their right to do so. Next question is, how will we get access to the screening uh, for the monitoring? So I believe they're talking about either the app or the paper. Sure. We're working with district leadership to make that available. Uh, if it is paper copy, we'll make sure that uh, families have multiple copies at home so that the parents can uh, complete the screener prior to their student actually leaving for school. Um, but the district is also working really diligently with um, the uh, companies that offer the online screener uh, as an app to see if that will be able to be used. And that is our preferred method um, of applying the screener for both students and staff. 
um, but we will always have a paper copy available um, and send that home to families as well as have it available at the school before the student enters into the building. So more information to come on that once the district notifies us uh, as to whether or not we are allowed to use the app and what that would mean. Um, we will definitely have paper copy no matter because we know that some students don't use a cell phone, um, but we will definitely have access to the screener um, materials once the decision is made. How has the, or will the attendance policy be um, changed to can take into consideration if someone is diagnosed with COVID or asked to quarantine? Uh, I asked a similar question on our call with district leadership today. The attendance policy has not been changed. However, that does not mean that if a student or, or an adult becomes ill due to COVID that there won't be provisions put in place. Um, I don't know what those provisions are just yet, but the goal is not to penalize a student for something that obviously is beyond, beyond his or her control. Um, we've had students, I believe, um, who were out for the flu and uh, we would make necessary adjustments to make sure that the student is able to make up the work. So um, a student will not be retained because they, they were uh, diagnosed ill with COVID. Okay. Um, will the PTEC students have lunch um, with their own PTEC cohort or will they potentially interact with all of the NH student, NHS students on campus during lunch? I don't have a definitive answer for you just yet, only because we have not completed our cohorting. Um, Mr. Roberts and I have had multiple conversations about uh, the likelihood of having students eat closest to the classroom that they're in. Um, if that were to happen, that would mean that, um, that the students could potentially have uh, lunch uh, in a location where NHS students are. Um, one of the concerns obviously is the contact tracing that would need to take place in the event of, um, of an illness. Uh, so that, that decision is, is, hasn't been made yet. And so we're trying to figure out what that looks like, but that would also involve us looking at student schedules. Um, so more information to come on that, but we'll, we'll take that question um, and make sure that we get back to you. Okay. What is the status of the China trip? <laughs> so uh, the China trip, and Renita help me out here, but the China trip has not been canceled. However, that does not mean we're going. Um, when uh, prior to the start of this school year and in talking with district leadership uh, with Dr. Adamowski um, several, several months ago, um, the decision had not been made to cancel the China trip, but uh, we are not, we don't have any plans to, to travel, obviously, this December. So parents, can I just add a little bit to please, that, Karen? Yeah, please do. So uh, we will have a parent meeting sometime in September. Uh, we have a meeting with uh, our partner, EF, uh, later this week. Um, in Norwalk Public Schools Health. In preparation for um, meeting with, with parents and students in September. So more information will come on that soon. The next question is, is there flexibility where a student is scheduled to be in school, uh, but isn't able to make it in and attends virtually from home? Yes, we'll look at those on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we don't want students uh, changing their, um, the, the method by which they participate in school, but if a student uh, is ill, um, unable to come to school, um, or for whatever reason, we need the parent to communicate that to our office to make sure that we understand why the student is participating remotely, but that does not necessarily equate to the student changing his or her status to remote learning versus hybrid. So as long as you're communicating with us, um, we can make the necessary adjustments. And uh, when do NCC classes begin? On which date? NCC classes at NCC begin on August 26th and the NCC classes that we are teaching at PTEC will be starting on the first day of school. There have been numerous issues with uh, course requests and scheduling for the fall. Um, how do you plan to resolve these issues and when will, when will students receive their final schedules? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, Renita. 
When will students receive their schedules for the fall and have um, any issues with scheduling for the fall been resolved? Carol, did you want to take that or would you like me to? Sure. Um, the student schedules will be available on the first day of school. Um, relative to the NCC schedule, Ms. Donnelly can speak to that as to when they will be available, but I know that students are always able to check my ComNet as a first uh, resort, uh, a first stop, I should say, for their um, NCC schedules. Um, relative to um, any scheduling issues, Ms. Costello and I have been working um, on the schedules um, pretty much full time, all time. And so um, we are addressing any and all issues that may, um, may have come up. They will certainly be addressed and resolved and we will not leave anyone with a, with a schedule that has an issue on it. And um, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. On remote learning days, will uh, classes be live or by video? I believe that's what, what's intended. Uh, will it be through Zoom? Um, and where will the students who are present in the class physically be? So will the groups be together um, or not? Uh, I think we are still planning for that. Um, that did come up in our retreat today. So Renita, I'm not sure if you wanna speak to that or we can table it until we have more information. Um, I think, well, at, at this time, the plan um, is that both cohorts will be meeting with the teacher uh, simultaneously. So there will be a cohort online while the teacher is also presenting to a group of students within the classroom. Um, how the teacher will interact with both groups um, really has to do with teacher planning. And that's what we're looking to address school-wide and district-wide when teachers return. Um, on the 27th uh, with additional training. Um, so it should be a mixture of both, but both cohorts will be meeting together at the same time. I think we may have addressed this. Um, if you do distance learning, can you change your mind later or switch at any time? Um, and the answer to that was yes, within reason and following protocols. Parents would like to know the nurse's email address so that forms can be sent directly to the school nurse. Is there any way we can um, add that to the chat or email it out to parents? Sure, we can do both. Uh, Ms. Donnelly, if you wouldn't mind adding that to the chat and then we'll also include it in our next communication. Sure thing. Thank you. And in addition to that, can the health forms that are required be emailed so that parents can complete them and return them? Yes, they can. I'll include uh, the nurse's email in the chat as well. So the next question is that um, her son has a Chromebook from his middle school who attended a different district. Uh, can I exchange this Chromebook for one this week when I pick up the new one or should I return the old one to his middle school? Uh, I would check with the middle school, but uh, unless the student received a Chromebook from PTEC, they are not required to return something that is not our property. But they will still get the laptop. The next question is, does the middle school nurse send medical forms to the high school? No, the parent needs to turn in the uh, health forms as an incoming ninth grader. The middle school does not send it because they are required to turn in a new health form with a, with a recent physical for incoming ninth grade. We're gonna take a few more questions. Um, and uh, before we end for the evening, it looks like we do have uh, a few questions about Chromebooks. Um, are students required to pick up a school issue Chromebook or can they uh, use their own personal laptops? So students can use their own laptop. Uh, we are not giving or issuing Chromebooks again for the 2021 school year. They will be laptops. I believe they're HP laptops. Um, so if a student elects to use their own, that's fine. Okay, um, and if parents are having trouble with internet access at home, um, are there any resources the school or district is providing to assist them uh, with getting 
fast enough, I guess, bandwidth for, for their multiple students in one home? Yes, we're working with uh, Ralph Allen Zizi, who is uh, Chief of Innovation and Partnerships, and he is working diligently to secure um, internet service for families in need. Um, so what I would suggest is that the parent contact Mrs. Donnelly, um, and we are going to assist as best we can to make sure that students have reliable internet service uh, to the extent possible, but that is a commitment that the district is willing to make to make sure that all students can engage in learning, um, both virtually and in person. Thank you. And for the last question, we have if a student is sick, would I have to send a note or an email or some type of message? Annie, do you want to talk about your process? Um, yes, uh, so an email is fine. You can also call and leave a message on the PTEC line, but if you want to email me directly, um, that, that's always best. And as soon as I get the email, I will update the attendance in PowerStool. Is that our final question? We do have a few additional questions. Uh, we just posted the email address for our school nurse um, in the chat box. So if you need that, you can access it there. Um, there are a few more questions about the process for Chromebooks. Um, I just want to remind parents that this presentation will be posted. So some of their questions were addressed earlier in the presentation. Um, unfortunately, because of time, we will not be able to um, address all of the additional questions, but I believe most of them are about procedures like wipes um, and Chromebooks, then we addressed that earlier um, in the presentation. If for some reason you feel that your questions were not answered, please feel free to reach out to uh, Ms. Amaker, uh, myself, Ms. Donnelly, or Ms. wilshire Toth by email. We will, we will be sure to respond to you um, with an answer when we have one available. So I thank all of our parents uh, and, and district leadership for, for participating in our PTEC town hall meeting. Uh, we will be completing and finalizing our reopening operating plan and that will be made public, I believe this week, if not early next week. And so that will have additional details in it uh, in the meantime, please do not hesitate to contact me uh, or any member of my team. Uh, we want to definitely make sure that you get your questions answered and that you have all of the information that you need to feel comfortable, as comfortable as you can, uh, in having your child participate in Norwalk Public Schools uh, via remote learning or uh, the hybrid model. So again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your questions. And we will be sending out additional communications uh, as plans become uh, finalized. Have a good evening, everyone.